staff can leave or not? I don't care. Let, let, me, look. let, let me look at the... Good evening. We'd like to call the Durham City Council meeting to order at 7.01 p.m. Monday, June the 15th, and certainly want to welcome all of you here this evening. I congratulate those people that came out on a hot night, but you got a cool place to be. Uh, we have a very long agenda this evening. We might be making some adjustments uh, as we go through, but if we could take a moment of silent meditation, please. Thank you. All right, that's Councilman Brown, if he would lead us in the pledge. Madam Clerk, can you call the roll, please? Mayor Bell. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden. Councilmember Brown. Here. Councilmember Katati. Councilmember Davis. Councilmember Moffitt. Here. And Councilmember Shule. Here. We have three ceremonial items that we're going to do this evening. Uh, the first is for National Parks and Recreation Month proclamation. I would ask the Director of Parks and Recreation, Ms. Rhonda Parker, if she would join me. Podium. Thank you. Uh, it speaks to the fact that whereas parks and recreation programs are an integral part of communities throughout this country, including the city of Durham, whereas our parks, trails, and recreation areas and programs are vitally important to establishing and maintaining the quality of life in our communities, ensuring the health of all residents and contributing to the economic and environmental well-being of a community and region, whereas parks, trails, and recreation programs build healthy, active communities that aid in the prevention of chronic disease, provide therapeutic recreation services for those who have disabilities, and also improve the mental and emotional health of all residents, whereas parks, trails, and recreation programs increase a community's economic prosperity through increased property values, expansion of the local tax base, increased tourism, attraction and retention of businesses, and crime reduction, whereas park trails and recreation areas are fundamental to the environmental well-being of our community, whereas parks, trails, and natural recreation areas improve water quality, protect groundwater, prevent flooding, improve the quality of the air we breathe, provide vegetative buffers to development and produce habitat for wildlife, whereas our parks, trails, and natural recreation areas ensure the ecological beauty of community and provide a place for children and adults to connect with natural and recreate outdoors, whereas U.S. House of Representatives has designated July as Parks and Recreation Month, whereas the City of Durham recognizes the benefits derived from the work of our Durham Parks and Recreation Department. Now, therefore, I, William B. Bill Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim the month of July 2015 as National Park and Recreation Month in Durham and hereby urge our residents to take special note of this observance by visiting our parks and trails 
participating in programs and special events throughout this month. I went to my hand, Corporate Civil City of Durham, North Carolina, this is the 15th day of June, 2015, and I'll present this to Ms. Parker for any comments that she might have. Thank you, Mayor, City Council, City Manager, and residents of Durham for recognizing the importance of parks and recreation for the health of our community. Two programs I want to share with you very quickly that are on the table by the door is our Rock the Park movie series and our concert series, which are free throughout the city of Durham, and these cards are at the front. Also something new, because we've heard from communities that you want events in the parks, we have a fun caravan that's coming to a park near you. We're going to Lion Park, Oakwood Park, Burton Park, Whippoorwill Park, and see our Wood Park to start it off, all in the month of July. So we'll have mobile recreation for children, and we'll be doing crafts, obstacle courses, relay races, and more. So please join us in recognizing July as Park and Recreation Month. Thank you. Uh, this next proclamation speaks to disabilities, and I'm going to ask March Clemens. Is March here? Oh, great, March. March is chair of the Mayor's Committee on Persons with Disabilities. Whereas on July the 26th, 1990, President George H.W. Bush signed into law the American with Disabilities Act to ensure the civil rights of people with disabilities. The legislation established a clear and comprehensive ma national mandate for the elimination of discrimination against individuals with disabilities, whereas ADA has expanded opportunities for Americans with disabilities by reducing barriers and changing perceptions, increasing full participation in community life. And however, the full promise of the ADA will only be reached if public entities remain committed in their efforts to fully implement the ADA, whereas for the 25th anniversary of the Americans with Disability Act, the city of Durham celebrates and recognizes the progress that has been made by reaffirming the principles of equality and inclusion and recommitting us efforts to reach full ADA compliance. Now, therefore, I, William V. Bill Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby encourage all citizens, businesses, and government agencies to affirm their commitment to work toward full ADA compliance and to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Americans with Disability Act in the city of Durham. With my hand, Corporate Civil City of Durham, this is the 15th day of June, 2015. I'm going to present this to Ms. Clemens, and again, for any comments that she might have. March. I'll just hold Good evening, Good evening. Mayor Bell and the members of City Council. Thank you so much for everything, and good evening, my citizens. I am Margaret Walter Clemens. I am the chair for the Mayor's Committee for Person Disability. My vice chair is Barbara Arendt, and my other vice chair is Glory Whitehand. I am honored accepting this provocation and ask all citizens to continue to support equality and inclusion for persons with disability. Thank you so much for all your support and God bless you. It's, it's, it's always good to see how things are happening in the city pertaining to AD. When I was coming in, I was coming in yesterday, not, not over the weekend, they were, I was coming down Roxborough Street and I noticed that they were breaking up a lot of pavement along the curbs. And uh, when I passed by the other day, they had installed the ADA curb sites, curb breaks for persons that are, uh, will have to make use of that. So that's, that's just another example of uh, how serious we take the ADA and how much we're trying to work as hard as we can to make ADA accessible in all areas, especially as it pertains to city utilities. Uh, this next proclamation speaks to the Internal Audit Week proclamation. And I'm going to present this to Ms. Patel, who's Assistant Director of Audit Services. And th this is a, I'm proud of all our departments in, in the city of Durham, but this is one that I'm particularly proud of because uh, we sort of reinstituted and reconfigured this department when I first, first became a mayor in 2001. It's done an excellent job. Uh, it's well, well thought of and 
Uh, it really serves its purpose well, not only for the city departments, but you know, for the city itself. It keeps us out of trouble, it keeps us on a straight course. Whereas internal auditing is a vital part of strengthening organizations and protecting stakeholders of both the public and private sectors, whereas internal auditing helps identify and manage the organization's risks and ensure policies, procedures, and controls are in place and working appropriately, whereas internal auditing is an increasingly sophisticated and complex activity requiring specialized knowledge, training, and education, whereas internal auditing is an established profession led by the Institute of Internal Auditors with a globally recognized code of ethics and international standards for the professional practice of internal auditing, whereas the contribution of internal auditors to the success of organizations in a global economy at large deserves our recognition and commendations. Now, therefore, I, William V. Bill Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim the week of June 22, 2015 as Internal Audit Week in Durham and commend its observance to all citizens, Whitman Han and the Corporate Civil City of Durham this is 15th day of June, 2015, and I'm going to present this to Ms. Mattel for any comments that she may have. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Bell, Mayor Pro Tem, and Council Members, on behalf of the Director of Audit Services, I would like to thank you for recognizing the week of June 22nd as Internal Audit Week. Our staff and our department is committed to providing training opportunities that will enable the staff to um, reinforce the city's ethical culture and values. As part of this week, we will be hosting the fifth annual Fraud Prevention Awareness Symposium. We will also hold other activities Wednesday through Friday of the week. Thank you again. Let me ask, are there any comments by members of the council? I recognize Councilman Shul. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, um, we've had a reporter, uh, Jim Wise, who has been covering this council for a long time and this city for decades. Uh, and Jim, this is his last uh, meeting covering the council. And uh, he will be retiring from the News and Observer, but not retiring from writing. Uh, and Jim is a tremendous asset to our city. If you all have not read his histories of Durham and his wonderful, many wonderful columns over the years, uh, you ought to do so. So Jim, I just wanted to give you a shout out and uh, thank you for your fabulous journalism for many, many years and hope you have a fabulous retirement too. Steve, thank you. That uh, is a surprise. I don't know, Jim, uh, we don't need to do this, but if you care to make any comments, uh, feel free to do that. You, you know your way around the room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> If not, uh, we'll listen, listen for priority items by the city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. No priority items. Uh, likewise, city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No priority items. And likewise, the city clerk. No items, Mr. Mayor. Okay, we'll proceed with the agenda. As I said, uh, we may move some things around as, as we move forward, but right now, we'll proceed with the consent agenda. And consent agenda, items that can be approved with a single vote if a council person or someone from the audience chooses to remove an item that's on the consent agenda, or we discuss that uh, later in, in the program. Uh, so I'll just read the heading of each consent agenda item. Item one is Audit Services Oversight Committee reappointment. Item two is the Durham Open Spells, Space and Trails Commission reappointment. Item three is the Durham Board of Adjustments reappointment. Item four is the Citizens Advisory Committee appointments. Item five is the Durham City County Environmental Affairs Board appointment. 
Item six is the Durham Cultural Advisory Board appointments. Item seven is the Durham Homeless Services Advisory Committee reappointments. Item eight is the Human Relations Commission reappointments. Item nine is the Citizens Advisory Committee reappointment. Item 10 is the Housing Appeals Board reappointment. Item 11 is the Housing Appeals Board reappointment. Item 12 is the Street Infrastructure Acceptances. Item 13 is Fiscal Year 2016 to 2018 City of Durham Strategic Plan. Item 14 is FY 2014-2015 Amendments to the Budget Ordinance and Grant Project Ordinances. Item 15 is Fiscal Year 2015-2016 Budget and 2016-2021 Capital Improvement Plan, known as SIP. Mr. Mayor. I recognize Councilman uh, Shule. Thank you. I have uh, an item uh, that my colleagues are aware of uh, that I'd like to uh, have discussed, and I, I think this is probably the best uh, item to do it along with. It's uh, concerning a feasibility of uh, a, a study of, of uh, the cost of our priority trails. And uh, if, if it's your uh, judgment, then I think this is probably the best item to do it with. We'll pull that item. Um, item. Item 16 is to adopt the City of Durham and U.S. Department of Justice Office of Justice Programs Bureau of uh, Task Force. Item 8, let me jump back here. Uh, item 16 is proposed FY16 Planning Department Work Program. Item 17 is the parking fee changes. Item 18 is parking management services contract. Item 19 is control parking in residential area, ordinance revisions and designations. Item 20 is the grant agreement between the City of Durham and the Youth Department of Transportation, Tiger Grant for the Duke Beltline Trail Master Plan. Item 21 is the Southeast Pressure Zone Water Main Contract, Construction Contract Award to Park Construction of North Carolina, Inc. Item 22 is the Lock Haven Lift Station Replacement. Item 23 is the amendment number two agreement to provide FY14 engineering services for North and South Durham water reclamation facility improvements between the city of Durham and Hazen and Sawyer PC. Item 24 is a contract for online payment solutions. Item 25 is proposed condemnation of property located at 3039 University Drive, parcel ID 123182 for the University Drive sidewalk project. Item 26 is the proposed condemnation of property located at 3033 University Drive, parcel ID 123184 for the University Drive sidewalk project. Item 27, we will pull as an amendment to contract with Terracon Consultants, Inc. for additional investigation and testing services for the police headquarters complex project. Item 27 is the amendment to contract with Terracon Consultants, Inc. for additional investigation and testing services for the police headquarters complex project, and we'll pull that item also. I uh, no, I didn't pull 26, I pulled 27. Uh, item 28 is the third amendment to the contract for special inspections and constructions materials testing services for the fire station number nine project with A1 Consulting Group. Item 29 is an item that can be found on the General Vincent's agenda. Item 30 is the elevator maintenance services contract. Item 31 is pest control service contract. Item 32 is additional funding and construction contracting authority for city hall annex and building envelope project. Item three is the on-call professional services consultants. Item 34 we're gonna pull is contract with Made in Durham to support business engagement for youth and to assist with the development of an education to work pipeline system for youth. Item 35, we're going to pull this a contract amendment with Community Partnerships, Inc. to provide Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act Youth Framework Services from July 1, 2015 to June 30, 2016. 
Item 36, we will pull this contract amendment with Achievement Academy of Durham to provide workforce innovation and Opportunity Act youth program element services from July 1, 2015 to June 30, 2016. Item 37, we will pull this FY 2016 contract for city services and programs for the Downtown Durham Municipal Services District with Downtown Durham, Inc. Item 38 is FY 2016 agreement to fund economic development programs and services operated by Downtown Durham, Inc. Item 39 is the Fourth Amendment to Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act contract between the City of Durham and Educational, Educational Data Systems Incorporated. Item 42 is a contract for pre-employment polygraph examinations. Item three is project man management services for the installation of fiber optic, optic cable citywide, ST277. Item four 44 is a license agreement with Google Fiber, North Carolina LLC. Item 45 is a transfer station scale replacement piggyback purchase. Item 46 is amendment of contract for roll cart services. Item 47 is extension of contract for roll, car roll cart purchase. Item 48 is an extension of interlocal agreement with Durham County for recycling services. Item 53 we will pull is completion of street and stormwater infrastructure in Stonehill Estates and Ravenstone subdivision. Items 40 through 41 are items that can be found on the general business agenda. Item 54 through 56 are items that can be found on the general business agenda as public hearings. Items 63 through 64 are items that can be found on the general business agenda. Item 29 is the general business. Um, I'll stop there. Let me entertain a motion for the approval of the consent agenda with the exception of item 15 of the budget piece, item 27, 34, 35, 36, 37, 53. And I think that's. Mr. Proctor, move and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Will you close the vote? It passes seven to zero. Okay. We'll go to the general business agenda. Item 29 is the proposed sale of various property interests to BH AG Durham Foster LLC. Is there a staff report on that? Is there any what is this now? Okay, we have persons that want to speak on this item. Uh, Mr. Manager, can you have someone give a staff report to just update this? If you don't mind. Gina Probes, Assistant Director of General Services Department. The item before you is to the um, sale of um, various easements for the Central Park uh, property and um, the development for BH. Let's see, what are there? To the developer that's um, building a, a hundred condominium units, and we're here to answer any questions. Yeah, I, I don't know if the city attorney wants to uh, update the council on some of the changes that were made in the development agreement, or if you want to, Gina, um, based on the conversation that we had in the work session. There have been um, incorporated into the development agreement many of the items that were addressed at work session, including um, additional oversight for approval of um, amenities and um, clarification of the of the easement locations and other park amenities. And the affordable housing co uh, contribution, I think, was added. That has been added too to address the Habitat for Humanity contribution. Okay. Um, this is a general business agenda, and uh, it isn't a public hearing. Uh, it's not required that we have public comments, but we have two people that have signed up to speak for this item. And I'm going to recognize each and limit your comments to three minutes. I have Patrick Biker and uh, Honorable Rashid Zadaki. Patrick, sure. you introduce yourself, please. Good evening, Mayor Bell, members of the City Council. My name is Patrick Biker. I live at 2614 Stewart Drive. I'm an attorney with Morningstar Law Group in Durham. Here tonight representing BHAG Durham Foster LLC. Uh, with us tonight are John Felton, our project architect, Dan Jewell, our landscape architect, and Matt Hobbs, 
with the uh, development company. Want to recognize all the hard work of the city staff and express our appreciation to them. Uh, this has been a, uh, uh, a uh, complex process, but we think it's reached a, uh, a conclusion point, and we very much request support of the agenda item that's before the council. Uh, I was communicating with Council Member Shule earlier, and I believe it's fair to assess the uh, valuation of the improvements to Durham Central Park, as well as the uh, payment for the easements and the contribution to Habitat for Humanity at approximately $200,000 as a community benefit in regards to this agenda item. I do need to clarify one other point that to follow up on the development agreement. Based on the input from Council Member Moffitt, we provided a, uh, a rendering that uh, is in your package that clearly demarcates the property line between the condominium project and Durham Central Park. Uh, based on that demarcation, uh, we believe it's appropriate for the liability issues to be uh, assigned so that liability and maintenance for the area of the stairs that's on the condominium project be uh, carried by the Condominium Homeowners Association and then the area that's within the park would be maintained and uh, uh, insured by the, uh, by the park as a typical city property. With that, our team is happy to answer any questions you all may have. And again, we appreciate everybody's hard work on this item. Before I call the next speaker, are there any questions or comments by members of the council? I'm sorry, sir. City Attorney. Mr. Mayor, members of council, to uh, Mr. Biker's last point on the uh, liability piece, um, I would refer to uh, the it's in your packet, uh, Agreement Revised uh, 615-2015. Under Section 2VIII, uh, the last sentence uh, reads, the developer shall maintain the terrace at its sole cost, shall maintain liability insurance covering the terrace, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that um, uh, language is proposed by the developer, developer to be stricken. I just want to make sure, right. Mr. Biker, that that's that's your request. I, yes, and that was based on before we moved forward with Councilmember Moffitt's suggestion to put in a railing and to demarcate the the concrete there it was based on it being a more open area and so now that we're clearly showing where the property line is it, it makes it much easier to assign uh maintenance and liability coverage recognize uh, thank you for is he here Good evening, Mayor, City Good. Council members. Uh, in light of the demarcation statement and the liability uh, that I was concerned about, uh, we're satisfied with this time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Entertain a motion on site. I'm sorry, nobody asked a question. I'm sorry, I do have a question. Uh, I noticed that there's a 40 foot by 40 foot easement that's called out now in the development agreement for stairs. Can, can you explain what's being placed in, I just want to make sure I understand what that is. It's part of the um, park amenity as far as the terrace and the, and the stair area, which is all together for on, uh, on the park side. So um, it is a con temporary construction easement in order to allow that um, construction. So it's a temporary construction easement? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I just want to comment very briefly. I have, I still have concerns with this. I understand um, that uh, when Mr. Biker was talking about values, he was referring back to what happened with East West on the other side of the street. Um, I was looking at the valuation of the property adjacent that as of June 1st, um, which the <clears throat> developers have valued at $1.8 million an acre. So I still think that the valuation is low. I understand that, that the city is getting benefits I understand that the developers also getting uh, benefits. <clears throat> so while it's not gonna give me heartburn, I'm still gonna vote against this tonight. Uh, further questions, recognize Councilman Katari. Thank you, Mayor. Just a quick comment to staff. I, um, we've had some conversation. I think we are, uh, several council members are requesting that for items where the city will be granting easements to property that we get a look at them as informational items sooner in the process. We've only had this item for two weeks. Thank you. Are there further comments? Recognize Council Shoup. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so 
Patrick. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for your uh, response to me, my email late in the day. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, and maybe we could just discuss that a little bit. Um, uh, how would you calculate the value of the, the city is receiving in return for the value it's giving up in, in these easements? Uh, you, you, you talked about that a little bit, but maybe you could say a little more about that. As I, when I think about the, when I think about what the developers getting, the following benefits occur to me, I may miss some. The easement for the overhang over the park, construction easements, easements for the foundation, moving the electric lines across uh, Roney Street to the park property there, moving the sewer lines to the park property, um, getting a private drive on Roney Street, which is partially park property, and getting an entrance into the building from the park, um, although it seems like that has now been sort of dealt with in a different way, um, which, and I thank Don for that, I think that's good. Um, right. So I'm not sure if I missed any or not, but uh, how are these various you know, how would you calculate, what's your sense of the worth of these easements versus the, the $200,000 figure, for example, and uh, do you, you know, it's, as Diane said, we've, we've only had this for a couple of mm -hmm. weeks, we've, we've talked about it a couple of times now, uh, so do you have any thoughts to offer on that? Yeah, yeah, I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize Morgan Haynes and the hardworking people at the Durham Central Park Board. I think what the value to the city comes from the collaboration that's happened between this project and Durham Central Park. And so what I'd be remiss in not pointing out is that I think the fire separation easement, what it represents is because of the state building code, the, the only right the city is giving up is the right to build a building within that 15 foot area. And that covers essentially everything with the, um, with the overhang the, uh, and the foundation. My understanding of the Durham Central Park Master Plan is that there were no plans for building structures within that area anyway. So I do think it's a, uh, a, a great benefit for the city in terms of the uh, improvements to Durham Central Park where this, this section of the park, um, you know, needs the dumpster relocated, uh, has some puddling that occurs from, from time to time to really make that a, a, a strong amenity for the park and to make it, you know, something like Mount Merrill, for example, on the other side. So I think you, you put that together with the contribution to Habitat for Humanity with the valuation that the staff uh, came up with, and it's, it, my, my impression is that it's $200,000 that, that, you know, meets a community need and also allows a, a project to go forward that's in compliance with the, uh, fully in compliance with the UDO. So, um, thank you for that. I, um, let me just, just a couple of observations. I think it's, it's our responsibility as a council to figure out, to lay down some standards and to figure out exactly what we want to be uh, exacting from developers who want public assets um, in the future around Durham Central Park or elsewhere downtown because I think we're gonna have more of it, not less. Mm. And I expect we'll have some in, the, in Durham Central Park as well. Um, and I think that uh, we, have, we have asked, this is the first time that, uh, that I know of that we have asked for and uh, gotten in a, in, a, in a development deal, uh, any commitment for affordable housing, and I'm appreciate that, appreciative that you all um, uh, accepted that deal point uh, when we proposed it. Um, and I think that that is something that uh, we are not, we can't uh, compel developers to include affordable units uh, if they're developing by right, but when we have some sort of contractual arrangement where we do have the ability to make deals with developers, I think that our developers ought to be expecting that, that we ought to be expecting contributions for affordable housing or inclusion of affordable housing units in, in, those, uh, in those projects. Um, and I think that we've got to figure out uh, as a council and with the help of our staff what, what a standard for that ought to be because I think that you all, developers and their representatives, ought to be able to expect it. And I think our community really wants it. And then the other thing I want to say is just briefly to, to, to say that I think that the, the, the work of the Durham Central Park Board was also excellent. Yes, sir. Uh, and I, I do think, though, that in a way that they're in a funny position. Uh, they're negotiating for the city in a way. Uh, and then, as Diane says, we get something 
mm. two weeks later. Uh, they are a private board. Uh, they've been criticized for a process that wasn't transparent. Um, I think that they probably operated the way any private board does, but it does raise the question for me when a city asset like this is involved, uh, the extent to which our, our staff ought to be involved earlier uh, and more fully. And so uh, we, our staff was definitely involved earlier and more fully and, and got us involved uh, earlier, uh, well, I don't know about earlier, but our staff was involved more fully than with the, with the Liberty Warehouse uh, deal where we had to work really hard to salvage Liberty Arts and, 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 make, and, and, and maintain and retain that community asset. Uh, but I think we need to continue to think about when we have a private organization which we respect and love, like the Durham Central Park Board, who does a wonderful job down there, uh, but we still have our, our needs, the city's needs are not totally consonant with theirs. And so I think we need to try to figure out what the role the city sh staff should play in those things. So I wanted to make those two observations. Um, I, I, um, I'm planning to vote for this. I think that um, there are a lot of good things about it. Um, it isn't perfect, uh, but uh, I, I appreciate it. And uh, so thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any other comments? Recognize Mayor Pro Tem. Well, we've had a. Mr. Mayor, you have a comment? Yeah, I just want a quick comment. Uh, I think this is a terrific development. Uh, for those of us who have followed uh, renovation in, in downtown Durham for many decades, uh, the one key element that always comes out on top is that we, to really do this and do it right, we need more people to live downtown. The apartments are terrific, but this goes one step further in the fact that these will be, for the most part, permanent dwellers, and they will, will be buying these condominiums. And I definitely want to uh, praise uh, the Central Park Board. This was a difficult challenge. I think you assumed it uh, very, very well, and we appreciate your your insight on this. I also want to thank the city manager for for suggesting that the Central Park Board get involved with the developer on this, uh, because we didn't really have to. You know, th this is uh, in terms of zoning. Uh, this is a, a form-based zoning where no public input is required. Um, but th the manager and others understood the sensitivity of this area uh, the size mm -hmm. of the development. And so I want to thank the manager. Also want to thank Don for uh, his suggesting that there be a demarcation between the private and the public mm -hmm. Central Park area. Definitely want to thank Steve as well for the contribution uh, to Habitat mm -hmm. for Humanity and thank your developer for that. Yes, sir. So I'm excited about this this project, this development, and I definitely intend uh, to vote for it. And being no objection, I would move, move the item, Mr. I'll Mayor. Second, I would second the you item. Second. <laughs> I will second the you item. I'm going to call the question. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to one with Council Member Moffitt voting no. Thank you very much. I, I'm not going to because we got a long night. I want to participate on a lot of issues, but the best way that we need to get ahead of this is that, Mr. Manager, I would suggest that when developers come to our planning process or to our uh, planning staff for a project, uh, they may be requiring incentives from the city, such as this, or dollar incentives. I think we ought to tell them up front they need to be creative because the question is going to come up as to how we deal with affordable housing. That's what, and I know the planning staff, and I'm not on a joint city plan, I know there's some plans for bringing forth some tools for how we get more affordable housing, but I think we straight up with developers when they come into our departments and they're looking for something from the city, we just need to raise the question. You need, you need to be aware that the councils want to know what are you going to do in terms of affordable housing. I understand, Mr. Mayor. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, let's move to the next item, 
which is item 42. We just finished 29. My, my iPad is slow. Okay, contract for provision of police psychological services. Is there a recognized councilman? Katana? I just wanted to compliment staff for changing this from a three-year to a one-year contract and putting in all the detailed provisions that I asked for last time. So I move the item. Second. Second. It's been proper move and second. Any questions? Call the question. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? We'll close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Item 41 is contract for the provision of pre-employment psychological testing. It's been properly moved and second. Call the question. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? And close the vote. It passes seven to zero. And we're gonna to move to items, I'm sorry. Mr. Mayor, I apologize. Would it be possible to uh, go back to the budget issue that Councilman Shul pulled and then we've got, I think that could be handled fairly quickly and there are a number of staff people that are 15, thank you. All right, Councilman Shul. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is an item that I've communicated with all of my colleagues over the last few days, but um, just to give you a very brief overview, um, during the budget uh, session, uh, we talked about the capital improvement plan, and after year one, there are no trails uh, included in the capital improvement plan other than the Beltline, which is slated for funding kind of out the cap outside of the capital improvement plan grid. Uh, and I don't think that the, this lack of trails reflects our community priorities. Uh, and after the meeting, a budget staffer, uh, which I very much appreciated, said that the trails weren't, were, were not included, <coughs> excuse me, because uh, there weren't enough cost specifics associated with them. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and that that's why they're not included in the CIP. Um, so now we're in pla are planning to embark on a CIP process over the next six to 12 months uh, that's going to prioritize all of our capital improvements, and I don't want it to be in a situation where the trails are left out of that. Uh, so uh, I want to thank John Goble, the chair of DOST, uh, talked to him, and he proceeded to talk to, to Alta, uh, a, a great uh, Durham company, does national work on trails, but is located here in Durham, and they... Uh, just to get an estimate uh, from this company, they could, they said they could do a study for twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars that would cost out uh, uh, the top ten trails so that we could, so that we could get them into our capital improvement plan. I uh, discussed it with the manager, who also said it was going to be important to get the feasibility of those trails as well as the cost, and they can also do that. So uh, the reason I think we ought to do this now is that if we're going to have trails at the table when we talk about capital improvements this year. We need some cost figures, so um, I, um, I also would say that the manager recommended that uh, we not name a specific number and put it in the budget, since the budget's all neatly toted up at this point and ready to go, but we rather ask the administration to have such a study conducted uh, in the range of twenty dollars to $25,000 and leave it to the administration as the best way to do this. Uh, so I would move that we ask the administration to have a trail study. Uh, that would cost out and rate the feasibility of the city's priority trails and uh, that that be conducted in the next few months so that we can include trails in our CIP deliberations. The property move and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Okay. Um, no, just, just a minute. Councilman Moffitt. We already did it with the consent agenda. No, it was pulled. That item was pulled. That item was pulled from consent agenda. I didn't. I assumed everything else was. The only thing that I pulled from consent agenda was Steve's point. The rest of the things were in context. Uh, Mayor Bill, I think the whole item was pulled. I, I didn't. I didn't mean for it to be pulled. I simply meant. Well, we're we'll going to pass it. I, I simply meant for Steve's item to be pulled. The other items were to be. M Mr. Mayor, can I go ahead and move the fiscal year budget? Sure. Been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Thank you. Okay, here's where I'm going to make 
a, a little bit of adjustment in the agenda. Um, we're still on general business agenda items. Uh, doesn't require public comments, but uh, item 63 is really an item that obviously a lot of people have an interest in. Uh, item 64 is employee health care carrier recommendation. I'm going to move to 64 and then come back to 63 which is 2015-2016 employee health care carrier recommendation. Yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, staff is coming up, but let me uh, start by uh, indicating that at, at uh, the council's direction at the work session uh, last Monday and your vote uh, directing the uh, city manager and the staff to, uh, to begin a uh, uh, clarification um, and development of uh, business deal points with Blue Cross and Blue Shield to provide uh, health insurance as a follow-up to uh, a lot of the discussion that kind of went on at the uh, at the dais and uh, at the microphone, uh, staff uh, has uh, over the last week, all the way through uh, about 5:30 this evening, uh, continued uh, that discussion with uh, the representatives from Blue Cross and Blue Shield to prepare a um, a uh, what, what is described in your packet as uh, the uh, the business deal points term sheets and um, uh, we are uh, recommending approval certainly want to uh, give Regina and David uh, any opportunity for comments I would just say that uh, uh, you know the issues around um, uh, the uh, discount rates and the guarantees and all those things get to be very very complicated uh, we've tried to, uh, to, to capture uh, the essence of the uh, the Blue Cross Blue Shield proposal uh, it is there for uh, for you to approve uh, basically what would happen assuming you agree with that this evening is that the staff and the attorney's office would then uh, engage um, Blue Cross Blue Shield to uh, uh, finalize the agreement that the, that we would then execute by the end of the month uh, Regina and David if you have any other comments please feel free and I may come back to say no other comments just here to answer questions thank you let me recognize the council if there are questions. Recognize the council Moffitt, council Katari, in that order. Well, I was just going to say that uh, I just wanted to give some acknowledgement to our staff. Um, this comes up and it seems pretty like, oh, here it is. But I know that in order to get here since last week, you all have worked very, very hard. You've worked through the weekend, and I know that um, it was not easy, and I appreciate all of the work that you've done to get us to this point. So thank you very much. Thank you. Recognize Councilwoman Katani. Mr. Mayor, are you gonna have public comment or are we just gonna discuss this? Oh, this, this is council. On? Okay, great. All right, um, I also wanna thank the staff for your considerable, well, really for going above and beyond. You made a recommendation to us and then you have dealt with many, many changes. So I just wanted to make some comments that I've already made at the work session, but um, as I've said previously, I continue to be troubled by the process. We received 10 or more revised proposals from Blue Cross Blue Shield. I'm very disappointed that Blue Cross Blue Shield did not include these provisions in their initial proposal. As I suggested, we hope that people will put their best foot forward when they come to the city the first time. I'm also very concerned about the impact on employees who will not benefit from an ACO network in year one. Um, if we opt for Blue Cross Blue Shield. This is a sizable dollar loss, especially for our families, um, totaling hundreds of dollars per month. I'm also concerned about the future unknown ACO network. There's a lot of uncertainty of, uh, around that. So I supported the prior staff recommendation and I'll be voting no on this item. I reckon, recognize Councilman Shul. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do have a question. Why is this contract for a 33-month period rather than the five years? Uh, we were just negotiating a 34-month period in the guarantee with Blue Cross Blue Shield. That was what was proposed. So we previously, the previous contract had a five-year rate guarantee from Aetna. Is that right? We or had we had a, a proposal initially for a three-year contract, but they did give us a five-year rate guarantee. Blue Cross Blue Shield also did present to us a five-year rate guarantee for the administrative services, but the 34-month contract or proposal around the dollar-for-dollar dollar guarantee was a 34-month one. Right. Councilman Shul, I would suggest we need to keep it there uh, in light of all of the transition to the ACO. 
I think five years would, would, would it's too far out. We're going to okay. need more time to monitor the progress. All right, thank you. And, and then just one other point of clarification, David Boyd, finance director, is we wanted to get this in alignment with the budget year as opposed to a September 1 start date. Yeah. The 34-month the odd period gets us lined up with a 7-1 start date after this, this coming year. Thank you. And then I have a question for Patrick. Uh, Patrick, what is your confidence level that uh, we will be able to tie these guarantees down in, in language that we feel comfortable with? And have you all started work on that? So at this stage, what we've been looking at is to make sure that there's a clear understanding between the city and Blue Cross about the term sheet. I know that there's been some challenges to getting there, but it's my understanding that we're there um, today. So, so once I have this document, then I will, uh, and I've already spoken with the lawyer for Blue Cross, uh, she and I will get to work on incorporating this document and these terms into uh, the master agreement. So I don't anticipate that there's an issue. The, 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 where the rubber meets the road is going to be on this term sheet, and it sounds like we're where we need to be on that, and there's a clear understanding as to what that is. Thank you. And um, so we've, we've essentially already voted on this, and, um, and we all know how the vote's going to go. Uh, but I, um, I also am going to, uh, I want to say, well, I, first I want to say, uh, assuming the vote does go to Blue Cross, I want to say that I know that our staff will do the best that we can, you all can, to uh, work very closely with Blue Cross, and I think all of us would, will be supportive of that and make sure that our staff has the absolute best uh, that our city employees have the absolute best insurance policy that we can uh, and uh, so and I will certainly plan to positively support that and I know that our entire staff will will be working to that end um, I, I, I have I just uh, again, I will also be voting uh, against this because I, I I was and remain in favor of the uh, the Aetna plan for the reasons that Diane uh, already articulated the first year employee discount the lower out-of-pocket uh, one that I don't think she did mention, which is the fact that the Blue Cross plan has, in the, with the ACO, has only two tiers, the ACO and the out-of-network, whereas Aetna has three tiers, the ACO, the in-network, and the out-of-network, which I think would, 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 would be considerable savings for our staff, for our employees. Uh, but, but also, I think it, it is worth noting again, and, and because we'll be doing this again in, in 34 months, that, that our... Our, our RFP process should, needs to be respected and uh, that w we, we need not put our staff, uh, Regina and David and their staffs, through what we had to go through with the continued uh, proposals after the, after the RFP process was, was normally would have been finished in our terms. And again, I think needlessly politicized, which should be a non-political process. Um, and, I think it does, making this choice, I think, does undercut our future ability to get competitive bids. Uh, who wants to come in and bid if you know that it's going to be undercut by, by repeated bids that go under the RFP? Uh, and then we give it to Blue Cross again. So that's happened twice in the last three years, and I think that it's really important that it not happen again. So I'm urging our friends from Blue Cross, uh, we'll be back in 34 months to Please respect our RFP process. Come in with your best bid, uh, and I know we'll be looking for that. So thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I, I had not planned to say anything, <laughs> but since I've had this side uh, to speak about why they're voting against it, you need to understand why I'm voting for it. Uh, first of all, there's nothing in our process that says a person can't come back with a different bid. I mean, they, they didn't say, if our staff had said this is it, that's one issue, but there's nothing in our process that says if someone, someone submits something, they can't come back with a different plan. Now it's up to us to, to analyze it. So that, that doesn't, didn't, didn't deter me. Uh, the other piece is we, we were trying, trying to play, um, compare apples to apples in terms of contracts, and I don't think we can do that. Uh, I think we have a plan that people have a history with, uh, and I haven't heard employees specifically complain about Blue Cross Blue Shield. Uh, the other piece had to do with, this was put out, that the city was going to cost us six plus million dollars more if we went with Blue Cross Blue Shield. Well, I, I would just remind people, they were projections. They were projections. They were projecting what the cost would be if uh, Aetna, Aetna's plan and what the cost would be 
it went with the initial, initial Blue, Blue Cross plan. Blue Cross came back with a different plan, which is the one we're looking at. And there was about a $300,000 difference, I think. Best, worst case, best case, worst case, Blue Cross was ahead of Aetna in terms of dollars. But really what sold me, aside from the fact that Blue Cross has a history in Durham, it's a corporate headquarters in Durham, it has employees working here in Durham, it has jobs here in Durham, has a proven record of providing community efforts to different uh, events in the city of Durham. What convinced me was the fact that they were willing to guarantee, they were willing to guarantee that if it looked like we were going to lose up to $6.7 million, they would cover it. So it's not going to be a loss to the taxpayers who are supporting this plan. Uh, they now have an ACO. I mean, that was the latest thing. That was another issue, whether you're going to get an ACO. They now have an ACO. True, it doesn't kick in during the first part of this program. It doesn't kick in to 2016, but they have one. But uh, I, if, if they had not been willing to guarantee that we would not lose the $6.7 million, I would not have supported them. My sense was, if you're so sure, guarantee it. And if, you, if you're sure of it, you won't have to pay it anyway, <laughs> because you'll meet your plan. So I, I just want the public to know that the whole concept about the taxpayers losing on this plan is not true. Uh, again, there are projections. Best case, it was a $300,000 difference between Aetna and Blue Cross, Blue Cross plan. Worst case, Blue Cross was better than Aetna. And we hope none of that happens. But uh, the, the staff has gone through, and the other piece is, I, I said it jokingly, but I was serious about it. I wanted to make sure that our attorneys could provide us a legal document which would secure that, 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 that uh, commitment. And you've heard the city attorney say he, he understands what the points are, and now it's up to him to deliver that. If he comes back and says he can't deliver it, that's a different issue. So the vote is going forth with Blue Cross Blue Shield under the assumptions that they can uh, document and secure a legal entity that will guarantee that we'll be able to make sure those, that gap is covered if the gap uh, occurs. Uh, so having said that, unless there are other comments, I'm going to call the question. Recognize Councilman Davis, Councilman Brown, and the Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, too, want to um, applaud the staff and the, the great work that they've done. But I'd also like to add one more piece, if we can, for them uh, and the uh, manager's office and that is that, that they monitor very closely and allow us to have a real assessment of uh, the tenants of this contract and to be able to report to the council at the appropriate time when we get close to that 34-month um, uh, uh, period uh, to really see where we are so that we can assure the citizens that there is not going to be a loss uh, to the taxpayers in, in Durham. Yes. Councilman Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for your leadership on this issue. I think the one key point has not been articulated, and that is that, uh, for our employees and for our taxpayers, we had two very fine firms competing against each other. And secondly, we will save money regardless of which way we went. And at a time of rising health cost, uh, that that's a real compliment to our staff and to our our manager. So I'm ready to move forward with the support of Blue Cross. I recognize the mayor pro tem if you had. Yeah, I, I, excuse me. I, as chair of the insurance subcommittee, um, it is really an honor to be able to do business with a local company. It took us a while to get here, but still, Blue Cross is Durham, and um, I appreciate that. And on that, I'd like to move uh, that we uh, pass this item as outlined. Second. I'm moving second. I'm going to call the question. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes four to three with Councilmember Katati voting no, Councilmember Shule voting no, and Councilmember Moffitt voting no. That the motion was to support Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Okay. Now let's let's move to 
item 63, Durham Chapel Hill Boulevard Business 15501 Road Reconfiguration Project. And what I'd like to do, Mr. Manager, is to have the staff come forth and present what this road dot is. We have persons that have signed up to speak in appropriate time. I recognize them. So, Mayor, you'd like me to review kind of the scope of the project and some of the I, concerns? I think that's important, yes. And some of the concerns that have been raised sure. in response to that. I'd be glad to do that. Again, my name is Mark Aronson, uh, Director of the Transportation Department. And what I will do then is take a few minutes to describe the scope and the purpose of the project and address some of the questions and concerns that have been raised regarding the project. And also, hopefully quickly get to a, a visualization that I think will help kind of uh, illustrate what's being proposed on, on the boulevard. Uh, I think as we discussed previously, we uh, look at review NCDOT's resurfacing on an annual basis and look for opportunities uh, to uh, restripe some of these pavement markings on their resurfacing to address safety, roadway capacity concerns, and improve bicycle accommodations. And this is one that's scheduled for resurfacing that this summer that we thought provided an opportunity to address some of those very issues. Uh, first, there's an existing speeding problem on the boulevard in this area from, from Chapel Hill uh, Boulevard to University Drive where it's five lanes that we propose to convert that to three lanes with bike lanes and parking. The existing speed limit is 35, the observed 85th percentile speed in this area is 45 to 50 miles an hour. Uh, I think also in the material that you've received before, we looked at the accident rates along this section of the boulevard. They're generally two and a half to three times the crash rate for similar streets in North Carolina. And then thirdly, the, the Durham Bicycle Plans recommends the provision of bike lanes along this segment of the boulevard. These bike lanes would provide connect connectivity between existing bicycle accommodations on University Drive and those that exist on Chapel Hill Road and that are also planned on Cornwallis Road. Um, so the, basically the proposed roadway reconfiguration is expected to reduce speeds, reduce crashes, and impro provide improved bicycle accommodations. It will also provide bus pullouts, 21 parking spaces, and a shorter distance for pedestrians to cross the street than exists today by crossing three lanes versus crossing the five lanes that they do today. The existing volumes along this section of the boulevard are approximately 14,000 vehicles per day and have generally been at this level for the past 20 years, ranging between 12 and 16,000 vehicles a day. So in our analysis, we've run the uh, traffic analysis on this and it's our opinion that the three lane cross section is expected to provide an acceptable level of service through this area. We've got several other streets that I think we've described before that have uh, similar pay, uh, three lane characteristics and bicycle accommodations, University Drive vehicles, the vehicles per day range from 10 to 17,000 vehicles. A section of Main Street between um, Buchanan and 9th Street with traffic volumes that range between 11 and 16,000. West Chapel Hill Street where we've converted to three lanes, it's at 12,000. And we're also proposing this on Fayetteville Road where the traffic volumes are 14 to 15,000. Uh, in summary, a public meeting was held on April 7th at Rogers Her Middle School to review the roadway reconfiguration and receive comments uh, and answer questions. A, a summary of that, uh, the comments that we'd received at that time and the response was included in the material that was provided to you previously. There have been questions that were raised about the ability to safely pull into and out of driveways uh, along the boulevard. The restriping will not affect any of the existing driveway ac or access points and will ensure that adequate site distance will be provided at all the driveways near where any of the locations for on-street parking is to be provided. We've also received and you've heard a request for a traffic signal at Hope Valley Road and crosswalks and that's simply beyond the scope of this project. This is just a resurfacing and restriping opportunity. We'll continue to work with NCDOT uh, for any opportunities to provide a signal and crosswalk at that location. There were also questions uh, raised about the provision of sidewalks. That too is really beyond the scope of this project, uh, but it certainly is something that could be considered as part of the uh, Durham Walks pedestrian plan update that we'll be uh, undertaking in the coming year. And while sidewalks are not proposed, it's fully expected that they'll be a safer walking environment for those that choose to continue to walk along the boulevard uh, 
uh, where they won't be walking next to a travel lane. They'd either be walking next to a parking lane or a bicycle lane. Um, there was also concern that bike lanes might be too close to the travel lanes uh, or the parking spaces. And I'll highlight this as part of the visualization, but there's actually a buffer that's provided between the travel lane and the bike lanes and between the bike lanes and the parking lanes that should uh, mitigate that concern. And I think a question had also been asked about how will we monitor this, and our expectation is that we will collect traffic uh, after, if, if this project is implemented, we'd certainly tr collect traffic data and would continue to monitor speeds, accidents, and, and volumes along the boulevard and would be happy to report on that as well. Uh, I think there are also concerns that were raised about the impact that the co roadway configuration will have on uh, businesses along the boulevard. And we, what we did is tried to do a literature search of uh, other examples of similar roadway reconfigurations that were done across the country on streets that were similar to the boulevard. Uh, and th these studies also have addressed the impact of the road diets on speeds and accidents. Just uh, very quickly in summary, without reviewing all those r studies, they've basically been shown to be a successful strategy for reducing speeds and improving the safety. And the research that we had found on the economic impact found that either there was no impact at all, or if there was, it was a positive impact on the businesses along the streets for which there had been a roadway con reconfiguration. What, if, if you'd like, what I'd like Dale to do is just pull up and quickly go through uh, just a visualization so that you can see what we're kind of proposing. And I think this was provided to you. I'm going to quickly go, in the sake of time, go Mark, through. Mark, go, go slow because I wasn't able to get it. Okay. Because Sorry, it was I'm, a big I'm seeing it for the first time. Okay. okay. I'll go th this, this first slide just shows you the limits of the project from Chapel Hill Boulevard uh, uh, to the uh, to the west, left of the map, to uh, University Drive on the right-hand side of the map. Next slide just explains for the section from Chapel Hill Boulevard to Legion Road what will be done. And I'll get to some actual visuals a little bit later on that will clearly illustrate. This is where we're actually transitioning from the four-lane divided to the three-lane section and vice versa as you're going west. Can you, can you go back to that? I'm really yes. Okay. So tell me where... where what this is, okay, for this section between Chapel Hill Boulevard and Legion Road, this is where we're going as, as you come from the west, the roadway is a four lane divided, it, and then it currently goes into the five lanes at the, in this area. This is where we would transition from the five lane, from the four lane divided to three lanes. And I'll, in, 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 a little bit later, I'll actually do a visualization that will show, clearly illustrate that. Uh, and then the next section, is kind of from Legion to Hope Valley Road. This is where we'll add parking. And again, I'll show a <coughs> clearer description that illustrates the cross section there, where the travel lanes will be, where the bike lanes and buffer and the center turning lane will be. Then the next section uh, continues. And this is where we will actually, there'll be part of the boulevard, and I'll illustrate this in a minute, where there will not be parking. It'll just be three lanes bike lanes on both sides with, with buffers between the bike lane and the travel lane. And then the very last section is kind of from James Street to University Drive, which is where we kind of transition back to the uh, exist, uh, existing lanes. So what I'd like to do is start with this, where it says Section A. This is where, again, the section from 15501, where, from the, where we transition from um, the four lane divided to the three lanes. And from that cross section, you can see that during that transition, it goes from the four lane divided to three lanes, one lane in each, each direction, a center turn lane, and a uh, striped shoulder. And this is also where we'll provide a left turn lane onto Nation that doesn't exist today that would help alleviate some of the rear end accidents that we've experienced at that location. And there'll also be a right turn lane um, at Legion that will connect from the boulevard to Cornwallis Road, Rogers Hur, and up to Chapel Hill Road. The next section, section B, kind of illustrates where there's uh, the section where we have th three lanes, one in each direction, a center turn lane, 
a five foot bike lane on each side that's separated from the travel lanes by a two foot buffer. And then on the north side of the road, there's a street, there's 10 foot space for a bus stop that's out of the travel lane and out of the bike, uh, bike lanes as well. Then the next section illustrates a cross section where we continue with the three lanes, uh, one in each direction, a center turn lane, five foot bike lanes on both sides that are separated from the travel lane by a two foot buffer, and then that 10 foot bike lane that you'd seen on the previous illustration is replaced by what will be the space for 21 parking spaces on the north side of the road an eight foot parking space with a two foot buffer next to the parking space to kind of address that uh, the door issue uh, so that that would not interfere with the five foot bike lane. In other words, there'll be a five foot bike lane that has a two foot buffer between it and the travel lane and the parking lane. And then the last section illustrates kind of the cross section pretty much from Midvale back to University Drive where there will be no parking and it will simply be three travel lanes, one in each direction, 12, uh, center turn lane, bike lanes on both sides, separated from the travel lanes by a four foot buffer. And then just quickly to show you what exists kind of today, this is from the eastern end of the project, looking west, the five lanes that exist as you look up the hill today, that would be restriped to provide, as I just indicated, three travel lanes, one in each direction, a center turn lane, a, a four foot buffer, and then a six foot bike lane on either side. And then the next visualization shows a little further up the hill where we transition to providing the par parking. It still is a three travel lanes. This will be shown as three travel lanes, one in each direction, a center turn lane, and then a five foot bike lane on each side with a two foot buffer between the travel lane and the bike lane, and then a two foot buffer and then uh, between the bike lane and the parking that will exist in this section uh, where there are 21 parking spaces provided. So that's a quick overview and I'd be glad to answer any questions that you might have regarding the, the visualization or any of the other information. <laughs> Thank you. And I, I want to thank Mark also. I, I called a manager over the weekend. Was it weekend before the weekend? Friday. Friday, yeah. And asked if Mark could, the staff could develop a more pictorial view of what was being proposed. And this, this is what we've got. So I appreciate you. Well, I want to thank uh, the planning department that helped us with their, their graphics expertise as well. Thomas Dawson was great help in pulling this together. All right, thank you. Let, let me ask first are there questions or comments from, from the council on what we have? Recognize Councilman Davis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I just want to thank um, Mark and, and his staff and the planning and ev everybody else to give this visualization. Uh, but also, I, I guess my biggest concern down the road is the safety of those students at Rogers Hur. Uh, I've gotten several comments from people who are associated with the school, and they've indicated that we've had some really near misses of some tragedy that could have happened along the way with kids darting across uh, that road, uh, stopping and starting, and pulling up and those kind of things. So uh, I was um, originally in favor of this, and then I pulled back a little bit, but I think the uh, safety of those students is paramount and I will be supporting it. Other, other comments? Recognize Councilman Brown. Yes. Uh, Mark, thanks again. This is a much clearer presentation than we had seen previously. Uh, you mentioned that there have been a variety of studies throughout the country, mm -hmm. and I know that we heard from Bob Chatman uh, at our work session. Could, uh, could you cite a couple of those studies uh, and, and tell us their conclusions, please? Yeah, I think one was done, I think, uh, from the... Um, you know, speak more to the mic. Excuse please. me. One was done from the University of Washington study, looked at two uh, road diet corridors in Seattle uh, that to see what uh, impact it had on both the volume speeds and uh, economic activity. There was one that was done on a, 
again, of a similar type of street in, uh, in California, uh, in Los Angeles. There was one that was done in Vancouver, Washington, and then there were a couple that were done in Kentucky. And then we also looked uh, closer to in state here, the one that was done in Charlotte, that a fairly analogous street that was converted and uh, where they'd also observed reductions in speeds uh, and improved safety and very little impact on actually the traffic that was traffic volume on the street. Okay. And the effect um, on businesses? The, I don't think the, the Charlotte, Charlotte study, study addressed the economic impact. Those other studies actually did address the economic impact. Charlotte just looked at effect on speeds, traffic volumes, and safety accidents. Okay. Thank you. And then my final question uh, may be for you or the, the manager. Uh, we heard, that, unfortunately, this weekend that once again the General Assembly may be uh, ready to get involved in local issues concerning striping of state streets. Um, have you heard anything? I, I, no, I, I tell you, I, I emailed uh, our state senator, one of them, uh, Mike Woodard, who used to serve with us here on this council because he was quoted in, a, I think, a Herald Sun article on, on Friday stating that this may come up and he was in opposition to it. Uh, is there late news about what happened in Raleigh today? Or? I have not heard uh, of any action on that matter uh, today, Councilmember Brown. Uh, my understanding of the proposed legislation is not that it these uh, these actions would be prohibited; they would just require the approval of the uh, uh, straight State Transportation Board. That's uh, true, and I, I think there's been it. some follow-up that uh, discussion as a result of some issues that Mike has, uh, the Senator Woodard has raised, even with NCDOT staff, to where they're they, actually I think they are look, considering it tonight. Uh, they, they may be debating it and looking at perhaps making some modifications to that to perhaps establish a threshold above which they would go to the board uh, or maybe even some guidelines that NCDOT staff would use to kind of over, to provide a little uh, clear direction on where these would be appropriate. But what I was going to say too is I don't think that uh, regardless of, uh, of the timing or the, the substance of that that it should impact uh, your direction to staff. Right and we'll just uh, deal with whatever we have to deal right. with at the time that we need to do that. Thank you. <coughs> Recognize the pro tem. Mark, could you share the cons of the restriping? Um, the, yes, uh, there well, are. Well, it was, it was <laughs> the really, <laughs> uh, I'm just going to, are considering. I know that as, as you've heard that some of the concerns have been raised about the economic impact it will have. Like I said, from what we've gathered in the studies, we don't think that it will adversely affect uh, the activity along there. Uh, w will it slow traffic down? It probably will. Uh, but again, that's one of the objectives of this is to slow the traffic down. Uh, might there be uh, congestion at some times? Possibly. Uh, more so with three lanes than there would be with five lanes. But again, it's nothing that we would expect to be uh, unusual or beyond what a three lane section should be able to accommodate. And we think that it will actually improve, reduce the number of accidents. Are there plans to um, put more traffic signals in the area where Mechanics and Farmers Bank corporate building is? Uh, the, the one place, place where there was, has been a request and we've done some studies and would like to, will continue to work with NCDOT is at uh, Hope Valley Road, Hope, that Hope intersection. Valley, right. uh, if, if we were to pursue one, that would be the location okay. at that intersection. Okay, thank you. Mark, uh, one of the concerns that I had raised is that by restricting the corridor to three lanes or one lane from two lanes to one lane that as you move towards uh, University Drive where the stoplight is uh, I felt that you were going to be creating more of a queue 
in terms of people stacking up further along 15501 at the stoplight and then going on University Drive where there's always, there's always congestion depending on the time of day. you have any thoughts about that here? Um, Pete, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think at that location we have one lane now where you can make the left turn basically from 15501 business onto University going toward downtown. That won't, there's one lane today because it, uh, there's only no, one. I know that, but my question is, because there's one lane and now you've suddenly had uh, two lanes going into the one lane, now you've got one lane going into it, what are you going to be doing along think, the corridor of 15501? I think what, we'll, well, what you need to make sure is that we have coordination between the James Street traffic signal and the signal at University Drive so that they are coordinated. Since there will be one, there'll be one lane going through on at James Street. Let, let, let so me tell you where I think we've already got a, a road diet, and I guess that's what I'm, I'm trying to get an appreciation for what's being proposed here. And I see this every morning. If, if you're coming from South, South Point Mall on Fayetteville Street, where you've got two lanes in each way, yeah. as soon as you pass Whitcroft, you suddenly go into one lane each way. Right and the traffic stacks horribly <laughs> at that point until it gets back to Fayetteville where you've got two lanes. And that's what I'm trying to understand, get an appreciation for this corridor in terms of what will happen. Because I, I, I know what, what I do sometimes. Sometimes I cut off of Fayetteville Street and go into one of the neighborhoods to get where I am. So have, have you done that type of analysis on this, this site? We ran the traffic model at this, at this intersection and found that it would operate at a level service D, an acceptable level, that it would handle the traffic volumes through. Reading it now. What is it now? It's C. It's at a C, will it continue at C or D? It will continue at C. It actually will continue at a level service C at this intersection. Well, I thought you said it's going to a D now. Maybe I missed something. I misspoke. It'll, uh, that's why I just asked Pete. Okay. It will be a main t Our model shows that it would run at a level service C. Our acceptable levels are D. We would accept it up to D. Okay. I, I have some other questions, but I, I'm going to uh, go to the audience now for persons who have signed up to speak on this item. And as, as I call your name, if you come to the podium to the right, uh, state your name and address, and you have three minutes. Uh, Wayne Lee, Kristen Leposky, Joanne. Andrews, and I'm just calling the names the way the cards are presented, not whether you're for or against. David Stevenson, Susan Sewell, Deanna Hall, Kendra Bridges, Chris Russo, Martin Stein, Steinmeier, Ivona Piper, Sam Hudson, Claudia Lopez. Now, is there anyone whose name I did not call that would like to speak on this item? Again, this is not a public hearing, but because of the issue, we're allowing people to speak. So is there anyone else whose name I didn't call that would like to speak on this item? In that case, uh, Claudia Cooper, is she here? Uh, you, you're, you're the last speaker. So if uh, we could start it off with Wayne Lee. Is Wayne present? My name is Wayne Lee. I represent Hair by Design uh, on the boulevard. And um, as I said a couple of weeks ago, we're not the enemy. We believe in the same thing that most of you all believe in. We want a safer boulevard. We helped build the boulevard to what it is today. You know, I, um, I feel like we should have been granted the opportunity to see this plan and help be a part of the plan. We want a stoplight, we want a crosswalk, we want sidewalks, but we feel like that this is going to be more hazardous to people's health. Um, I'm afraid someone will back out of my parking lot into a cyclist, and I'm for cyclists. I'm for bike paths all over town in safe places. That's really all I have to say. Just. Um, Please don't, um, the businesses that you say you want to 
visit and and represent our our, our that you want to take care of these businesses just please think about what we want because the majority of the businesses don't want it we just want to be a part of this discussion thank you Good evening, City Council. Um, thank you for letting us speak. My name is Kristen Lampkowski. I reside at 605 Yancey Street, and I am the current chair of Bike Durham. You all received an email from me on Friday regarding um, a public petition that we put out online and asked people um, in support to sign on to. Our current numbers for that petition are 1,053 people in support with over 375 comments in support of this um, reconfiguration. We have a number of those supporters here this evening to speak as well as just to um, participate by being present and I would like to ask everyone in support to stand at this time. Thank you all for coming out and for those of you who have worked um, to move this project forward. We would also like to thank the um, city uh, staff that have worked on this. I'd like to make just one additional point. A number of Durham cyclists um, do not have access to a vehicle and use a bicycle as their main transportation mode. The most recent um, crash that resulted in a cyclist death on our roads was Isidro Razo. Mr. Razo used a bike as his main form of transportation and that is what we are thinking of this evening when we are asking you to move forward on this. This is the opportunity to make this section of road safer for different transit users, uh, specifically for bicyclists. While this project unfortunately does not include pedestrian um, improvements at this time, we of course support pedestrian improvements in the future. They're just outside the purview of this project at this time. And we don't want to see the city pass up an opportunity to improve safety on this section of road because this plan is not perfect. Um, this is a good plan that will improve safety on this section of road and we encourage you to vote in favor of it. Thank you. Good evening, City Council. My name is Deanna Hall. Par par pardon, and me, pardon me. I, I, I think we know where people are. If we can hold applause so the speakers can get through this process, we appreciate it. Thank you. Good evening, City Council. My name is Deanna Hall, and I reside at 205 Cary Wood Drive. And I'm here representing the Durham Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee or Commission. And in light of the safety concerns surrounding traffic collisions, along um, with Durham's commitment to creating a more livable community for everyone via the Mayor's Challenge for safer people and safer streets. The Durham Bicycle and Advisory Commission is excited and thankful for the opportunity to show support for the reconfiguration of the 15501 Business Corridor. Not only is it an opportunity to create a, cru a crucial link in Durham's bicycle network, but it's an opportunity to move Durham closer to being a safe place for all residents, regardless of their mode of transportation. And since the changes can be made at no cost of the city, and if it's proven that these changes are not effective for all of the members of the community, it's a minimal cost to reverse them or to change them into an, another configuration. <laughs> Um, we would like to thank you for your leadership and for your support of the safety and the prosperity of our community and we hope that you'll consider joining us in supporting this project. Thank you. Mayor, members of council, um, my name is Kendra Bridges. I reside at 2752 Campus Walk Avenue. Um, I'm also a member of the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission with Deanna, and I wanted to um, share a few thoughts about the economic considerations that have been raised. Um, we understand uh, and value the concerns of the business owners on the corridor. We definitely don't take lightly um, that people are concerned about their livelihoods. Um, you'll hear, I believe, from some business owners as well who are in support of this project. Um, we're very thankful that city staff was able to put together put together that excellent memo that Mr. Aronson spoke to on 
the economic impacts uh, shown in other cities which have done similar projects. Um, specifically, the uh, Seattle study showed that um, taxable retail sales along two different segments that received similar road configurations um, did not decrease and in some instances did increase and they also used um, comparable corridors that had not been uh, given a road reconfiguration as a control. So it was a very um, great study to show that benefit and had similar, um, similar studies were done as well in Vancouver and in Los Angeles as Mr. Aronson mentioned. Um, there were other su studies listed in that memo that also talked about uh, property values not being negatively impacted as well as other um, economic benefits as well. Um, we appreciate your thorough consideration of this matter and the opportunity for all of us to come up and speak to you tonight about our considerations uh, to make Durham um, an even better city and uh, respectfully request that you um, approve this project. Thank you so much. Good evening. My name is David Stevenson. I live at 2809 Legion Avenue and I'm president of Tuscaloosa Lakewood Neighborhood Association. The TLNA board approved a statement in strong support of this proposal. From conversations with, with neighbors and listserv traffic, I am convinced that the majority of residents also support this, not only in Tuscaloosa Lakewood, but also in Longmeadow and Rockwood neighborhoods. The, re the reason is simple. Restriping will, make, will lead to a significant improvement in safety for those of us who travel the boulevard daily, whether by foot, um, by bike, or uh, by car. We believe that there will not be a significant problem with additional cut-through traffic in our neighborhood, as some have suggested. The simple reason for that is that there are very few viable alternatives for through traffic to, to move to, to the downtown area without uh, taking a boulevard or university dr uh, drive route. Like everyone else, residents in the adjacent neighborhoods wish that the restyping were accompanied by sidewalks and a traffic signal. That's not on the agenda tonight, but I do urge the council to increase your support for non-downtown districts like the Boulevard Rockwood district. Um, there, this needs to be the first step in a deliberate plan to add more uh, improvements to the boulevard, uh, such as sidewalks and, and traffic signal not 10 years from now, not five years from now, but much sooner. I've lived a block and a half from the boulevard for over 23 years. I've seen good and bad. We have an opportunity tonight, tonight to do something that is really good for the boulevard and its businesses, for the neighborhoods, and for Durham. So I urge you to support this, to approve this proposal for the sake of safety and for improve, improving the vitality of the Boulevard Rockwood Commercial District and the surrounding neighborhoods. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Bell and City Council members. My name's Joanne Andrews. I'm the art teacher at Rogers Her Middle School. Um, thank you for responding, uh, Mr. Davis. If you're familiar with Rogers Her, my classroom is the glass-walled room at the end of the building that faces the boulevard and faces um, Cornwallis Road. I see a lot from my classroom all day. Um, I've worked at Rogers Her for seven years. In my email to the council earlier today, I described a lot of different points, but I'm gonna focus on our kids who cross the boulevard, either either to come to school or to um, go to the store, because if you ask of why a middle school student would cross the boulevard, it's because the Takis and the Mountain Dew are on the other side. So to be clear, our students are not allowed to cross the boulevard, um, but that doesn't mean they don't cross the boulevard. Um, what happens when they return, and I'm in my classroom watching them, they get a severe scolding, a call home, and we breathe a sigh of relief that one of them hasn't been hit. Um, it, this has been going on for years. The other morning, I saw a student of ours walking along the side of the road to come to school. When I asked him why he was walking, he said he missed his bus, he had to walk. So it would just be a step in the right direction for the safety of our students. Um, if we could just slow the traffic down a little bit, a crosswalk would be great, a traffic light would be great. Um, I try to model to my kids as a cyclist that there are alternatives to getting in a car and going less than a quarter of a mile, but I can't even encourage my kids 
to walk um, to their house that's right across the street, either on in the Nation Ave area or in the apartments behind Foster's. So I encourage you to do the restriping as a step in the right direction. On behalf of my students, um, I encourage you to vote for it. Thank you. <coughs> Hello again. My name is Susan Sewell. I live at 2904 Legion Avenue, less than a block from 15501 Boulevard. Um, I support the road diet proposed on 15501. It is a great step forward for a safer, walkable neighborhood. I've shared with the council members and many others in the last two weeks an AARP fact sheet on road diets. Concerns mentioned here two weeks ago and in the opposition petition you received were all answered in that fact sheet with studies showing that we can be reassured about the increased safety and that all of them are, on, uh, we don't have to worry about them. <laughs> uh, the fact sheet's description of an ideal first project for a city I thought was interesting. It is a road that carries no more than 15,000 vehicles a day and we're at 14,000. It serves a downtown neighborhood and we serve several in this area, with the potential for reinvestment. And that clearly describes this area to a T. We are the ideal location for a road diet. Thank you. Hello, Council, and thank you. My name is Chris Russo. I reside at 807 Parker Street. I'll try to keep this short, but every time I say that, the opposite happens, so I'll try to keep this long. Um, I'm here representing Bike Durham as well. Kristen spoke eloquently on our behalf. I also run two businesses in Durham, so I'm a Durham employer, one of which is called Tilthy Rich Compost. Council member Steve Shul is, uh, has been a longtime subscriber, so we appreciate that. Um, that is a that's a business based around the bicycle, and this improvement and reconfiguration would greatly benefit our reach. Uh, I also run a web development shop called Savas out of the American Underground, and one of the core reasons we chose that space in downtown Durham was because there was safe cycling access to that space. So uh, I, I, through those two businesses, hire, uh, should say, employ nine uh, Durham residents and do all of that without owning a car. So what I think I'm trying to say is that I'm representative of a generation that prioritizes these things, safe cycling access, safe pedestrian access, and that is what draws us to where we work and play in Durham. Thanks for your consideration, and I hope you'll support this reconfiguration. Good evening, my name is Ivona Piper and I am downtown resident. I reside on Main Street in Crest Building. I would like to urge a city council to support the road diet of uh, Chapel Hill, Durham Boulevard for three reasons. And being a sixth or seventh speaker, I probably am going to repeat things that were already said just to make it a point. Number one is the safety of the solution. Uh, I have heard, I have read statistics that in the last five years on that section of the road there were about close to 160 collisions and some of them uh, creating injuries. And uh, I also read that road diet diminishes uh, accidents anywhere from 20 to 50 percent. So this is a, a, a proven solution to uh, increase the safety of that part of the road. I am also the resident of this area, and as such, I would like to increase accessibility and livability of that part of the city. Because uh, with the road diet, it will be much easier for us to conduct business there, to access, to patronize the restaurant, and access the retail because the traffic will be slower. It will be much easier to cross the street. You can park and, and go to several businesses. And the third reason is truly the benefit for the business. The study that Mark quoted, I also read. And basically, uh, by looking at the revenue, there was increase in business in, in, in Seattle area for the around the streets where that implemented the road diet. And the key concern of the businesses was that they were going to cut down the number of parking spaces versus that solution that was presented actually increase, increases number of, of street parking. Uh, but what's the most beautiful about this whole solution is that it's just a restriping. So if, if it truly does not work, the cost of reverting to the old 
way it was reconfigured is not that costly. So thank you for considering that solution. Good evening. Uh, my name's Sam Hudson. I reside at 5301 Blue Sage Drive in Wake County. I'm a frequent visitor to downtown Durham. Uh, bicycle and walking's been my primary means of getting about. I'd like to point out with, uh, I support this reconfiguration, would like to point out this will add to the inventory of complete streets in Durham of uh, giving more access to cyclists and pedestrians. So thank you for your support. Mr. Mayor, dear members of the City Council, uh, my name is Martin Steinmeier and I reside at 1017 Demiri Street here in Durham. Um, I'm uh, a member of a still fledgling group, um, the Durham Coalition for Complete Streets. Uh, we created this group um, because we realized that it would be beneficial to look at complete streets from uh, the perspective of not just cyclists, not just cars, not just pedestrians, but really from all perspectives and from different perspectives such as economic uh, benefits, health benefits, uh, security benefits and so forth. Um, what we also realized was uh, how big the, we have been working on this for several months, what we realized how big the support is from really different walks, people of different walks of life, different areas of Durham for a concept like this, complete streets, and again, for different reasons, people were concerned for their own personal safety when walking or biking to work, taking public transport, and then walking the rest to work. Uh, people who just want to be out and about and be healthy and safe. Um, and uh, so it seems to be a really good concept for Durham. This project, in, in uh, my personal estimation, after having done this work and having talked to people, fits the bill really well. Um, I think when I look at what we have heard in terms of evidence, supports that this, is, that this has every chance to be a good project. It is not the answer to all the problems. I, in that sense, I want to really also sympathize, and I think it's important to recognize the concerns of the uh, business owners as well, who say what happens to the people who get out of their cars and then walk the rest of the, uh, 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 the, this, the, the way along the street without a sidewalk. That is a concern. That has to be addressed, in my opinion, as well. Uh, but that doesn't mean that this is not a good first step. So I think recognizing these concerns is an important part, but not uh, uh, resorting to, to the uh, uh, response to, to not take this really important, and I think by all the evidence that we've heard, really good and beneficial first step. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mayor Bell, members of the City Council. My name is Claudia Cooper. I'm the owner of Google Hope Bakery and Cafe and Restaurant on the Boulevard. Um, I think we have all navigated the Boulevard and know what it is like. Um, nothing short of a death trap on a good day. Um, I do support the road diet. I think it is a very significant first step in the right direction of doing something about the boulevard because something has to give, something has to be done. Some of the concerns we have had as business owners, and a lot of them have been voiced, um, when we look at the studies and the pictures that are presented in the studies, they look really different. They have a green area in the middle of them, they have pedestrian walkways, they have lights. Um, so what we were worried about is that this is a phase one. Um, what we're hoping for is a phase two. Um, I think the restriping is definitely a great solution to do something immediately about the speed that is of grave concern. I think a phase two of sidewalks, traffic lights on Hope Valley Road, a clearly defined turning lane because it also is an issue when people use the turning lane as a driving lane. Um, so I would hope that there would be a lot of definition where the left turns are and where they should stop so people don't get in the left turn lane and drive down it. Um, and speed signs, um, more than two that I think we currently have. And also enforcement of such. Um, it's rare to see an officer on the boulevard helping with the speed, and I think it would be important to, when this is implemented, if it gets implemented, that it is enforced. Um, I think there's a lot of interest, clearly, about this project, so I also would like to point out that the boulevard is significant to the city of Durham. It potentially connects six neighborhoods. Um, it's always been amazing to me um, where it has come, where it started. I've been there for 17 years. 
Um, it has really become a road that now a lot of independent businesses are on, very interesting businesses, locally owned and operated, and I hope that that continues. Um, I would like to ask City Council to support that there is a phase two to this project, that we just not just get a restriping, but that there is further consideration and money spent and attention of the City of Durham spent on that area, which I think is also a very significant commercial corridor residential area and significant, significant connector for many neighborhoods in the city and we're part of the city. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, Ms. Cooper was the last person that signed up to speak. Is there anyone else that wants to speak on this item that ha has not spoken? Yes ma'am, if you can come and just state your name and address please. Good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is Leslie Richardson. I own the Music Clarity Studios in the lower level of the Hair by Design Building. I feel that the road diet, although it does initiate um, a bike lane, that I am for that. Um, but I also have concerns about my patrons coming down towards the driveway in order to park so that me and along with five other businesses are able to be patronized. Um, I did have some questions. I'm not sure if this is the moment to speak on it or if there's anyone I can ask in regard to it, but um, some of the questions were in terms of Charlotte, where the studies were done, how comparable was that to 15501? I know Charlotte's a much bigger city than Durham. Um, whether those five lane to three lane slimming was similar to that that was being done in Charlotte. Um, also, some of the um, questions I have that if this does go through, what sort of signage or detours would affect uh, the businesses? Would we be able to continue to operate as usual? Uh, because there is only one entrance. I'm not sure exactly where those lines are defined, uh, but I feel as if during snow days or during days that my students are coming down uh, after work areas, usually nine to five, and I operate from usually three to nine, you know, will people still be able to get here on time or if they will be rushing? And although there will be some speed that I feel that should be um, monitored, whether we can consider some alternatives such as having a flashing speed monitor or maybe increase the police officers that are there to monitor those who are speeding. Um, or if there is a way to keep the five lanes but still add a bike lane to some of the areas where the grass is, or I'm not sure if repaving over that would be an option, but maybe to select a solution that works for both businesses and the bicyclists. Um, and like many people have said, whether it would be possible to implement another phase that where the businesses would be part of the discussion. And that's usually the, pretty much the questions that I have. Thank you for considering that. You're welcome. The staff respond if you can. Just the one. Uh, response to the it was East Boulevard in uh, uh, Charlotte and it had mixture of uses some were commercial and part of it was a little more residential so part of it was analogous to some of the business uh, characteristics along the boulevard and I, I just want to clarify two things in response to the questions that you'd raised earlier about the level of service uh, based what we've de what we determine is that the existing level of service at University and the boulevard is level service C in the morning, D in the afternoon, and that would be unchanged with the, with the road diet. Level service C is a 20 to 35 second delay, level service D is a 35 to 55 second delay, and that's the standard that we use throughout the city is a level service D that, that we, uh, that's our, what we shoot for. And also in your question about the Fayetteville Road, Fayetteville Road traffic south of where it's four lanes south of Woodcroft is uh, 26,000 vehicles per day, and that transitions to 17,000 on the two-lane section north of Woodcroft. On the boulevard will be the, the volume on the four-lane section as you're moving eastbound and transitioning to three, it goes from 15,000 to 14,000. So basically it's, it's a continuous uh, volume on the boulevard and at Fayetteville, it goes from 26,000 to 17,000, which contributes to the 
queuing. Thank you. Councilman Katata, did you have a comment? Thank you, Mayor. I actually had a couple questions and then some comments. Um, Mark, could you possibly, do you remember the vehicle volume on the East Boulevard in Charlotte? You did say it was analogous in terms uh, of use. 20,000. 20, okay, so it was actually higher. Thank you. Um, can you also um, comment, I know other people have asked this as something, if this moves forward, can you, well, in either way, can you uh, explain to everyone what the schedule is for resurfacing and then what the impact of restriping would have? Like whether we do five, la five lanes or three lanes, does that have any um, impact on the amount of time the project takes? No, that wouldn't have any impact on the resurfacing schedule. It'll be this summer. I don't know that we have. Yeah, they the the contract has until April of 2016 to be completed. But I think the expectation is that work will be completed this paving season. And do you remember about how long it'll take to repave the boulevard? I, 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 had I, heard. I, I don't okay. know a matter of days, but I, do, I, I don't know. I could find that out and, okay. and get back with you. That'd be helpful. Um, I wanted to thank everyone for the tremendous outpouring of support and concern surrounding this project. It's been quite impressive. And I really want to thank staff for all their efforts in gathering information and examples of other successful projects and responding to questions. So as um, many of you have already said, as illustrated by the numerous studies on the impact of road diets, um, all the evidence does seem to point to increased safety, aesthetics, and positive impacts on the surrounding community, residents, guests, and businesses alike. So while I hear and appreciate the concerns by some business owners, particularly those expressed in the petition, those options regarding lights, crosswalks, and sidewalks, all of which I support, those are next steps and are not the option before us. Um, let's not tr lose the tremendous opportunity before us to make this corridor safer and more attractive. I wholeheartedly support this plan restriping, and at the appropriate time, I'll move the item. Thank you. Hello, I recognize Councilman Schiff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Mayor, you and I must be among the, I guess, 9,000 people that turn off of Fayetteville Road onto Juliet, <laughs> then go to um, <laughs> Uh, head down to uh, get on get on to MLK and then go down Archdale on our way downtown so I understand where you're coming from I'm cutting through a lot of neighborhoods when I do that too um, I do want to say to mr. Lee and Ms. Richardson I appreciate your comments and you said you're not the enemy there's no truer words have been spoken uh, I grew up in a retail business and I've been in business all my life and I know it's hard to be in a business and be in a small business, and I certainly don't take your concerns lightly. I do believe that this will help you. Uh, I think that traffic will be going more slowly, and I think that more people will be interested in stopping by. Uh, and uh, we'll find out if that's true, but I, I do believe that. Um, the, um, also, about the sidewalks, I think that we should be realistic about that. I mean, so we did a we did a capital improvement plan uh, where the manager asked us to, ranking where the manager asked us to rank the the projects that we thought were most important, and the council as a whole rated sidewalks number one. So the manager then and the staff came forward to us with a with a capital improvement plan that we're going to be discussing uh, later this year, and but. That both versions of that have somewhere from 15 to 20 million dollars worth of sidewalks over the next five to ten years, sort of depending upon how we arrange it. That's a lot of money, it seems like, but sidewalks are very expensive. And this would be a particularly expensive sidewalk because it's one thing to lay, if the, so the sidewalks um, behind Motor Co. in that small neighborhood down there, which is city, city, totally with city money, no state approvals, city roads, cost about quarter of a million dollars a mile. Uh, the, the sidewalk on Hillendale Road, uh, which is curb and gutter and is really kind of more of a street project, uh, is I believe the number is three million dollars a mile. Um, so when you've got to put in curb and gutter and when you have a state road, you have a tremendous number of approvals. Uh, and so what I'm trying to say is, I think it will be, I think we ought to be prioritizing this sidewalk, but if we do, it will still take a long time because it will be expensive and we'll need a lot of state approvals. It's a state road. 
it just makes it harder. Um, so I'm looking forward to our sidewalk and, and bike study that we're doing this year, which is going to reprioritize all our sidewalk and bike projects. The council will have a look at that. And I think it's going to help us make tremendous progress on the walkability and cycling around this city. But I don't think that's mostly what this is about. To me, this is about traffic safety. That's the number one thing this is about. I'm, I cycle, but that's not what to me this is mostly it's about. It's about the fact that on a wet day, the, the traffic wrecks on this, uh, on this stretch are about five times the North Carolina average for a similar street. We're talking about traffic fatality. We have 54 injuries, traffic injuries there in the last five years. And I also want to reinforce what Eddie said. I thought that the most moving email we got was from you, Ms. Andrews, uh, and I appreciated you coming here to say that again, but I thought the stories of those students crossing and, and what you wrote was great. I also want to compliment you for spelling Biscuitville with a Q. Uh, it, it certainly raised my impression of Biscuitville, and I'm more likely to go there and get a, a croissant. <laughs> um, but uh, I, uh, I really appreciated everybody's participation. In, and for those of you all who are in business there, we don't, none of us take your concerns lightly. It's critically important to us. We all go there and love to you know, patronize your businesses. We don't want to hurt. So I'll definitely be supporting this. I think it's a great plan. And I'm also, one more thing, the North Carolina Department of Transportation supported this, not just our, our, our local. That's significant. They're not going to support something where they don't think the flat traffic can flow as it ought to. They're, they don't, they, that's, that's what they care a lot about. So anyway, I really appreciate our staff bringing it to us. Councilman Moffitt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to, there's been a lot of thoughtful uh, discussion on this issue. There's been a lot of considerations, and I want to first thank everyone who came out tonight, um, everyone who's here, both for and against, uh, because I, I know that you're here because you want Durham to be a great city. Um, the streets belong to all of us, the businesses along them, but also those who use them or would use them if they were safe enough. Um, economic studies have shown that road reconfigurations like this at their worst have a neutral impact on sales and property values and um, tend towards positive impact for the businesses along there. Um, on the boulevard in the section has been noted there's been high accident rates for motorized vehicles and it's clear that we need to do something and this is something it's also clear that more is needed. I think all of us here um, the call for crosswalks, sidewalks, a stoplight. But this is a big bang for the buck. We can make this safer for the people who drive on it as well as the people who cycle and walk and ride the bus. So I, I will be supporting this tonight. Thank you. Any other comments? Recognize the Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah, I, I do business at M&F uh, Bank and uh, traffic is normally a nightmare on the boulevard, just trying to come out of that uh, space is, is difficult. Plus, my daughter works at the corporate office, and I think if this will slow the traffic down, I'm certainly going to support it for me and for my child and for those of you present. Thank you for coming. I appreciate your uh, comments, and um, I plan to vote for it. Could I ask uh, the staff Oh, I had it. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, two weeks ago when we had this discussion, uh, I was somewhat dubious about this change. Um, but in the last several weeks, the, uh, the more I have read, the more analysis that I have done, uh, the more studies I have seen, uh, the more comparables with other cities that I have compared this boulevard with, uh, and the more citizens, and yes, business owners along the boulevard that I have spoken with, uh, leads me to conclude this is the right way to go. 
So I will be supporting this this evening. And I would suggest that for all of you who represent businesses along the boulevard, we need a boulevard that is as great as those businesses. And in order to do that, I think we need this change. And so I intend to support it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let me ask the uh, staff a question <clears throat> you may or may not be able to answer. Um, it's been said repeatedly that if it doesn't work, we can always go back to restriping it the way it was. Um, do you have an idea of what type of cost is involved in that? Because I, I don't, and I don't want to mislead you into okay. thinking that it's a, that it would be a, a simple task. It, this certainly is not a construction project, so we wouldn't be reconstructing anything to take it back to a five lane. But but it would it would be an effort to uh, remove this, the the thermoplastic that's applied, and it would have some impact on the the uh, uh, the condition of the pavement asphalt. So. Uh, while it certainly wouldn't be anything like undoing reconstruction work, it, I, I don't want to overemphasize that it would just be go out and restripe it back to five lanes. Uh, so I'd, I'd just leave it at that. My, my uh, concerns have been, and first of all, I, I'll say this because you should know it. Uh, I'm supportive of complete streets. I've told someone else that I was the first mayor in North Carolina to support Secretary S. Fox, safe streets, pedestrians, all that stuff. So that, that isn't an issue for me. The issue for me was what we're really dealing with. Uh, I was not very much impressed by the photos that came up last week because, quite frankly, none of those depicted what we were talking about. Uh, we aren't talking about sidewalks. We aren't talking about uh, a planted median. Uh, we aren't talking about street lights. We aren't talking about any streetscaping. And all those photos pretty much had that type of appearance. Uh, that was another reason I had asked the manager to ask Mark to present a more visual representation of what was actually being proposed. Uh, my, my concern was more about safety. My concern was about the businesses. Uh, my concern was whether or not they, in actuality, were, go were going to be hurt, but the fact that they felt they were going to be hurt was, to me, significant enough to try to understand some of the concerns that they were raising. Uh, s safety is an issue. Uh, I, I, I still personally have my doubts as to whether or not this function is going to work the way we want it to work. But given where we are, uh, I'm, and my vote does make a difference. <laughs> my vote does make a difference. But given where we are, uh, I, I intend to go ahead and vote for it. Uh, and what, what I think is, I don't want anybody to think this is phase one going on phase two. You're probably going to see phase two in my lifetime. <laughs> uh, I'm serious. You, you're talking about a massive amount of money to make the type of changes that those photo shops that we saw, to put sidewalks, to put curb and gutter, to put you know, street lights, to put all that stuff. I, I just think it's going to happen anytime soon. But I, I do feel that uh, the safety is an issue. I I'm feel a, a lot more persuaded that businesses might not be hurt as much as they think they're going to be hurt. But you always have that opportunity to go back and make the change. And the change isn't as easy. That's why I asked uh, Mark to tell us what we're talking about in terms of the change. But ha having said that, I think we've all had an opportunity to speak. I'm going to cut off discussion and call for a motion. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes 7 to 0. Thank you. Let's move to item 54, the general business agenda public hearings. Item 54 is Unified Development Ordinance Text Amendment Independent Living Facility, C TC 14-0005. Good evening, Steve Madlin with the Durham City County Planning Department. I'd like to first acknowledge that all public, all public notice has been carried out in accordance with law and affidavits have been completed in our part of the case files for both this item and the following item. Item pending for council at this point is a Unified Development Ordinance Text Amendment TC 1405, which is a privately initiated application by the Morning Stall Law Group to develop standards for a type of residential use called an independent living facility, which is a type of residential use 
for senior populations that the UDO currently does not accommodate. The draft text amendment ordinance provides for the following. It establishes the independent living facility use within Article 5 of the UDO. It clarifies references to similar uses within Article 5. It establishes parking requirements in Article 10 and provides a definition in the use uh, provisions, uh, excuse me, for the use in Article 16. Staff has concluded the request is consistent with the conference of plan and is reasonable and in the public interest and is therefore recommending approval. Likewise, the Planning Commission at their April 14th meeting uh, recommended approved by a vote of 11 to 0. Uh, as a reminder, Council will, will be required to take two actions. The first action will be a vote on the amendment itself and the second action will be a vote on the consistency statement uh, as required by state statute. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions the Council may have. Thank you. This is a public hearing matter. The public hearing is open. I would ask first other questions by members of the Council or the staff report. If not, we have one person that is signed up to speak on this item. Let me ask, is anyone else that wants to speak on this item? This item been a public hearing. Uh, I recognize Patrick Bicker for three minutes on this item. Good evening, Mayor Bell, Mayor Pro Tem, Cole McFadden, members of the City Council. My name is Patrick Bicker. I'm an attorney with, Morning, attorney with Morningstar Law Group, and I live at 2614 Stewart Drive. I'm here tonight representing Bartlett Reserve, an independent living facility in Durham on NC-55, just south of NC-54. Sean Yule, the general manager for Bartlett Reserve, is here with us this evening. We are requesting this text amendment because the UDO lacks a use category which serves the active older adult community between the care-intensive congregate living facility on one hand and the generic apartment complex with no services at all on the other hand. The old Durham zoning ordinance that was in effect through 2005 did provide for a retirement center life care facility, which is a style of development that accommodates independent seniors. Unfortunately, and perhaps inadvertently, the UDO failed to carry over a defined use category such as independent living facility when the UDO was adopted in 2006. Our research has found that five of our peer cities across North Carolina, Raleigh, Wilmington, Winston-Salem, Charlotte, and Cary, have similar use categories in their respective unified development ordinances. While these current definitions from our peers are helpful, we believe that incorporating essentially what Durham had in the old zoning ordinance back into the UDO represents the best option for this text amendment. This text amendment will stimulate affordable, good quality, market-based housing opportunities for independent seniors. Specifically, this independent living facility component of the UDO can attract new investment to Durham through the adaptive reuse of underperforming or underutilized office or hotel buildings. Our client's redevelopment, Bartlett Reserve, is a fine example of new investment and the adaptive reuse of an existing but underperforming extended stay hotel. The Durham UDO should facilitate the development of good quality affordable housing for independent seniors. As we have shown in our application, most of the categories from age 55 to age 85 and over are the highest percentage increases among all age categories in the 2000 and 2010 census data for Durham County. We believe this text amendment will encourage private investment to meet this strong demand for independent senior housing that is derived from Durham's superb health care, community amenities, and recreational opportunities. In closing, I wanted to thank all of the council members who took the time to go see Bartlett Reserve and to meet with Morgan Burkett, the developer who had the vision for this outstanding redevelopment. I am very sad to report that Morgan passed away last month from a very aggressive form of cancer. I deeply wish Morgan could have been here tonight after all the work he has done on this issue and that he could have seen Bartlett Reserve fully completed. Morgan was a very kind, caring gentleman, and it is abundantly clear that the Durham seniors who live in his development loved him very much. With that noted, we respectfully ask for your approval, and we'll be happy to try to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Other questions by members of council, uh, developer. Uh, again, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone else that wants to speak on this item that is not spoken? Uh, let the record reflect that no one else has to speak. Second. I'm going to close the public hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Public hearing is closed. Entertain a motion. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. And the next item, uh, next. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. No, you that's need what to I'm asking. No, that's what I'm asking for. Second. It's been a profit move and second, Madam Clerk. Will you open the vote? 
close the vote? It passes seven to zero. Moved item 56, street closing, Rooney Street, street closing 14000017. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council, Pat Young with the planning department. Uh, before you tonight is uh, SC 14000017. Uh, this is an application by Coulter Jewel Timms to uh, close 235.53 linear feet of a portion of Roney Street. And if this request is approved, uh, this portion of the right-of-way would be equally distributed, closed and equally distributed to the adjoining property owners, including the city of Durham. Uh, this request was reviewed by over 20 city, county, and state departments and agencies and public utility providers, and no issues or concerns were identified except for concerns regarding uh, access and liability raised by the City General Services and uh, Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, these were addressed through the agreement and associated uh, easement uh, adopted and authorized earlier this evening as item 29 on your agenda. Uh, staff rep recommends approval and I'll be happy to take any questions. This is a public hearing. The public hearing is open. Questions by members of the staff. Uh, we have one person that has signed to speak for this. Patrick Baker. Good evening, Mayor Bell, members of council, Patrick Biker again, representing the uh, um, developer of the 539 Foster Street project. I'm afraid Dan Jewell and all our friends from Durham Central Park have hit the road, but I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Are there questions by members of the council? If not, is there anyone else who wants to speak on this item? This being a public hearing. Uh, let the record reflect that no one else asked to speak. I'll declare the public hearing to be closed. Matter of fact, for council. Been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Uh, close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Thank you very much. Moved item 56, amendment to the Economic Redevelopment and Historic Property Preservation Incentive Development Agreement with the Concord Hospitality Enterprise Company. Mr. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, members of the Council, Reginald Jones, the Office of Economic and Workforce Development. This item before you recommends the approval of a contract to amend the agreement between the Concord Hospitality Enterprises Company and the City of Durham related to the economic develop redevelopment and historic property preservation incentive awarded to Concord October 14, 2013. The staff recommends that you, City Council, would give the City Manager authorization to execute an amendment to the original agreement between Concord Hospitality Enterprises Company and the City of Durham, extending the time required to secure a final certificate of compliance to no later than August 27, 2015. Reggie, what was the total number of uh, days of extension or months of that extension? It's 42 days. Thank you. Again, this is a public hearing item. The public hearing is open. I would ask other questions by members of the Council of the Staff Report. If not, we have two people that have signed up to speak. Um, Robert Gutman. Well, Dr. Gutman, I recognize you. How you doing? Hello, Mayor Bell. Yeah. Hello, Mayor Bell. You look wonderful. I'm glad to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and Mayor Bell and Councilman. I'm a, I'm a neighbor of the project, and ha my family's been heavily involved in all the planning that came before it and working with Concord. And we uh, certainly support this extension. They've worked diligently and carefully to preserve our neighborhood and they ran into some foul weather so we certainly recommend it thank you um Osleski, is, is he available if you have comments and is, is there any, anyone else that wants to speak out there tim okay good evening mayor bell members of the council um, my name is timothy osiki with concord hospitality uh, we are the owners and developers of the project that uh, we have been diligently uh, pursuing and trying to get uh, completed here by our deadline. Um, Mother Nature has just not been very favorable for us over this past spring and this past winter. Uh, the interior is all but complete. We're just in final uh, operations of setting up and cleaning, <coughs> but the exterior is, is, is lagging and we, uh, we would ask uh, your help to support this. I do thank uh, the economic uh, workforce development for uh, all of your preparation and your support in doing this. Thank you. Other questions about the council? Uh, anyone else want to speak on this item? 
Uh, let the record reflect that no one else has to speak. I will declare the public hearing to close. Madam Clerk, for the council. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Okay, let's move back to the items that have been pulled and I'm going to call them in the way they were pulled. Item 27, which was amendment to contract with Terracon Consultants Inc. for additional investigation and testing services for the police headquarters complex. Uh, Minister Razi, is he here? Yeah. Uh, good evening, Mayor Bell, city council members. I'm not going to be long. I'm just going to rehash some statements that I previously made uh, to the committee that was sent around Durham to get input on this facility, the new police station. If possible, I would like to uh, serve these copies. I'm not going to be long. I received a response to my, uh, my request letter pursuant to the public records, North Carolina General Statute, Section 132-1B, where I was requesting from the General Services Department, the city of Durham, whether or not there had been an EPA environmental impact study. I understand if you notice at the last paragraph in my response letter, page one, if your request for records, in your request for records, you have asked for EPA environment impact study statement, a remedial cleanup, EIS. It is not, I am not aware that this type of study has been done on the police department headquarters complex project, and I have contacted the city's environmental consultant, Terracon Consultants. I have several letters from Terracon, and based upon my in-depth study, just being what you would call an insignificant black man in Durham, I am able to really perceive that the city don't know whether or not that EPA should become involved or not. But I'm going to tell you why in my closing. A feasibility study is required and an environmental impact study and statement of remedial cleanup is required at the site in question. I know what is being said. Terracon has done the job. What you have is a peon cleanup company that has no credibility with EPA. I am saying tonight that there is a toxic lead deposit on that site. And I want you to bear witness to me in a few more days or a few more months as you begin building on that site. Something is going to happen in Durham that's going to make <coughs> way for what I'm saying tonight come to your mind. In my closing, you better check that petroleum leakage for lead. You can laugh all you want to. The last time I left here, I told you something was coming to Durham and crime increased. I'm telling you tonight, watch the weather. Thank you. No one's laughing. Appreciate your comments, and we have the manager to look at this. Thank you. Uh, item. Next item in the pool was item 34. Were you saying something? About? Yeah, but I, I didn't know if uh, you wanted to say anything. Hey, we'll be, if anybody has any questions or like the staff to follow up on what work Terracon is doing, we'll be glad to do that to clear the record. Well, I, I think since the comments have been made, the record ought to be cleared. Thank you. G 
Gina Probst, Assistant Director, General Services Department. Terracon is our um, consultant. We're working closely with them and with the North Carolina Department of Environmental and Natural Resources, and that is who we um, consult with and are following all procedures and requirements with Diener. Property move in a second, Madam Clerk. Will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Item 34, uh, Stephen Hopkins. Uh, that is item contract was made in Durham to support business engagements for youth and to assist with development of an education and work pipeline system for youth. Mr. Mayor, City Council members, my comments on this item can also be used for item 35. And all, all I'm asking is that before you give folks money to do programs for our youth, at least give us, show us some benchmarks that, that, that has been met and make sure that there are some accountability uh, for the money that we get. Because we got so many people running around here parting the fence, pimping our youth. And our problems ain't going away. They're getting even worse in some cases. That's my comment. Thank you. You're welcome. So you don't need to speak on 35, Steve. Is that right? All right. Entertain yeah, a motion on 34. Move the item, Move and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? And close the vote. It passes 7 to 0. Right. Entertain a motion on item 35. It's been profit and move and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. I was wrong on Thursday. I didn't mean to close Thursday. Move the item. Yeah, has someone seconded that? It's been proper to move and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? And close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Item 37. Uh, FY 2016 contract for city services and programs for the Downtown Durham Municipal Service District with Downtown Durham Inc. Uh, recognize Steve Hopkins. Uh, I would just like some clarification because I cannot find out anything that the Office of Eco Economic Workforce Development is doing to help entice black owned businesses into downtown. Downtown looks beautiful, but it also looks white. That's not Durham. Downtown should reflect Durham as a whole. And we know that the, uh, one of the shortfalls for black owned businesses is the cost to come down here. So, you know, I would ask council to look at supportive programs for black owned businesses to bring us downtown because we are growing and the black community should uh, benefit from all the prosperity coming downtown, not everybody else and not us. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, entertain a motion on item. Second. Been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Item 53, uh, completion of streets and stormwater infrastructure in Stonehill Estates and Ravenstone subdivision. Ms. Ms. Silver. Yes, good evening, Mayor Bell, Mayor Pro Tem, and members of the City Council. Uh, I'm Gwen Silver, a member, a uh, resident of Stonehill Estates. Our homeowners association president left. She doesn't drive at night, so she's already gone. But we want to thank you for moving forward with the completion of the streets and infrastructure. We're excited about that. It's been a decade since the developers put the in incomplete streets in and seven years since they left it that way. So we're looking forward to you completing the streets. And thank you very much. Have a good evening. Recognize council, recognize city manager. Can I take just a second since we're so much ahead of schedule than where everybody thought we were going to be? Maybe ask Bo uh, to put him on the spot real quick and just give an update on where where we are with those improvements at Stonehill. Oh, I didn't see Marvin there. I'm Marvin. sorry. I apologize, Marvin. Yeah, please, please do because I think it's important to uh, share that information. Thank sure. you. Sure. Marvin Williams, Public Works Department. 
So right now we've actually started assessments of both Ravenstone and Stonehill Estates to see how many repair, how much repair work will need to be done. Um, we anticipate starting basic repairs with our maintenance division after the 4th of July, and we're already starting to put the contract together so that we can let it for bids for completion of the streets within the developments in hopes of that we could begin work sometime in the fall. It really depends on how extensive the repairs are gonna be within those developments, but we're anticipating some paving acti activity happening this fall, barring any significant weather delays. Thank you, Mark. All right, well, the motion was made and seconded, right? Uh, and can you open the vote, Madam Clerk? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Okay, any other items that come before the council before we adjourn? Let me say that I know uh, that TTA is trying to pull uh, together all the council people who can go to visit Charlotte for the uh, maintenance facility. Uh, we just need, to, once we get a date, we need to let the clerk know so she can publicize, public, public, publicize it that the council will be possibly taking a trip to uh, Charlotte for that purpose. So okay. you, you expect the call. I know he's contacted Dan and you'll have conflict takes their head. And I may, I may, I don't need to go. So I, I told David he can get schedules that fit you all. That's fine with me. Oh, okay. I saw huh? someone in Salt Lake City. Yeah, well, it's just an opportunity yeah. just to see what, what's there. Okay. If there's no further business, uh, the meeting's adjourned at 9.26 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh,